Remember the Lord in all your ways and he will transform your path. Do not throw yourself to whatever you think that is right. Let's listen to the word of God. Walk with God. Do not rely on your own insight. Many people will tell you, go this way, go that way. No. The word of God is the light God gives to us. Spend time in His presence. Call upon Him. Whatever may be your situation, whatever may be in your mind, you have a God who cares for you. Go to Him. Speak your heart to Him. Empty yourself to Him. Let Him fill you with His will. Spend time in listening to the word of God and He will transform our path. That's why in the book of Sirach, chapter 5, verse 9 onwards it is written, Do not make use of every type of wind that is flowing. The farmer, what does he do? He waits for the wind for the harvest. Because if the wind is flowing from north to south, when he puts, the corn will fall straight away and the chaff will go away on the one side. But the Bible says, do not use. Now the wind is flowing, so don't do it. The ways are shown before you. No. Maybe so many people are walking. Why not I? You have to know what is God's way for you. What is God's will for you. That's why people will make many compromises to you. Many of the times everything may look good to you. Read the book of Proverbs chapter 16. Verse 9, Prophet, uh, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7, first you read, when, 7 and 9, okay. When, when the ways of people please the Lord, He causes even their enemies to be at peace with them. When you walk in God's ways, even the enemies of your life, God will turn into friends. When you walk in his ways, he will do everything. On the other hand, verse 9. The human mind plans the way. The human mind can plan many things. But the Lord directs the steps. But at the end, only God can direct your way. Your mind can say many things. Because verse 11 says... Honest ways, honest balance. The scales are the Lord's. All the weights in the back will be seen by God. God will put us in His scale and see why am I doing? What is the motive behind my actions? Man may do many things. God will see our intention. God will see our hearts. That's why in first Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 says, Man looks outside, but God sees the heart. That's why in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8 says, My ways are not your ways. My plans are not your plans. So we have to come into the Lord to know the plan of the Lord and commit our life, Father. And if you, though many problems, Proverbs 18 verse 10 says, if you determine to do God's will, the name of the Lord will become a great power for you. So many evil people are after you. 
but when you enter into the name of the lord the lord will protect you yes he will become a great zeal for you hallelujah 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 it is in the lord in the lord we will find our lives god is calling each one of us that's why the book of proverbs chapter 20 verse 27 says the spirit of man the if you spend time with the god the inner spirit of god will give you will teach you will make you to walk in his ways and do you know what is that the bible says the spirit of man is the lamp of the lord it will search all the inner depths of your heart and tell you this desire of your heart is not the desire of the lord this planning of yours the way you are doing it's not correct the holy spirit will search your heart if you give your heart to god if you are determined to walk in the way of god though your heart has so many desires the spirit of god will teach you if you don't do what will happen god will allow you okay you want to go in this way go i want to give you the best first class ticket for you if you don't want listen go if you want to go second class go that also you don't want to go to third class still you want to do your own way go but unreserved compartment you can neither get up or go anything that's why chapter 20 of proverbs verse 30 says blows and hurt god will allow in your life will cleanse away every evil that comes around you as do the strikes of inner depths of the heart god will allow pain and suffering for you to go through when you go against the will of god you will receive the blows and then you will come back some people come and tell me father i love that boy i love this girl please pray that is the will of god <laughs> then we say no Yes, if it is God's will, we will be very happy. Yes, it looks God's will. Your parents are agreeing. Your parents are agreeing. Many things. Okay, let's go ahead. No ma, no son. This is not God's will. What father? That is the end of looking at father. <laughs> They will go to some another pastor or somebody else. who can tell them yes yes go ahead come to me only i will bless the marriage also <laughs> praise the lord <laughs> hallelujah 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 blessed is the man who knows the will of god and commits to the will of god we read in the gospel of today mark's gospel chapter 1 jesus went into the house of the mother in law peter for some people the food will be more tasty in the house of their mother in law than in their mother because maybe they eat and eat and they got used to is it true tony ha huh? praise the lord they forget the love of the mother and they get used to the new food new taste of mother in law and that's what happened to peter so peter was little extra energy that day ah uh, so mother in law was sick he is called and not only he so many disciples went and told peter's mother in law is sick peter are one fellow said is not enough everybody goes and says peter's mother in law is sick so jesus came and healed that mother in law mother in law caught up and served them and 
when people came to know the town of Kafarnaum, all the people came. The whole town came to the house of Peter. And Jesus was so patient enough to heal everybody, cast out every evil spirit. And he became very tired, very late. And everyone went away to sleep. At the end, Jesus was tired. He also went to sleep. But then, if we allow the flesh to rule us, it will kill the spirit. Whatever may be the condition of the flesh, that is not, that is not, should be the reason to not to feed your spirit. The spirit has to be constantly taken care with vigilance, with great care. No, I came tired, my body is weak, so let me sleep. Let I am not able to get up to do the work of my God. No. Body can take in care. But if you lose the spirit, that is the end. That's why the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 15 says, If you are not alert, the flesh will pull down your soul to the mud. And everyone were affected with their flesh. They were all tired. They are all sleeping. But Jesus knew he was tired. Yes. He did not have enough sleep. It's true. But he knew first preference had to be given to the first. Otherwise, the second will take the place of the first. If I don't take care, feed the spirit to build up the spiritual phenomena of my life, my physical phenomena will take the center stage, the first place of my life. Everybody is tired. But very few are conscious of keeping alive their spiritual stamina, spiritual presence of the Lord. So early morning, even before the dawn, Jesus got up and went to pray, to be with the Father. Everybody worked. Some, the disciples, they were victim to their own sleep. Sleep is one of the ways through which evil will come into the laziness, will tie up your life. My dear friends, Sangam on Plus TV is God's gift for you for our times. Like, comment, share and subscribe. God will do wonders in your life. Praise the Lord.